And the 2,200 members of the CIO Brewery Workers have been called to a mass meeting at Soldiers and Sailors Hall in Oakland. Rock, 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 rock. How's that? Much better? KDKA-TV invites you to join us as we celebrate 50 years in our hometown. What a curious thing this is. Giant cameras producing tiny images of us. Those who passed through Market Square this icy winter day stepped before those cameras into history. A one-hour program the night before had opened the way for a marvelous phenomenon called television. They didn't even have a studio in those early days. In fact, everything was broadcast from this tiny transmitter site perched on a hill in Perrysville. The TV signal you get at home is still transmitted from here, and a portion of the original tower still stands as a backup. But KDKA Channel 2 began as WDTV Channel 3. The new medium was brought to Pittsburgh by Alan B. Dumont, who manufactured picture tubes. The goal of the Dumont network was not to sell advertising, but television sets. WDTV went on the air January 11, 1949, with a one-hour broadcast from the Syria Mosque. They told us all, you'd be sure and be here at 9 o'clock in the morning, and Ed Shaughnessy was a master of ceremonies, and he, he was there. I think I said there was about three or 4,000 sets, that's all, in Pittsburgh at that time. But it was fun. <laughs> well, come on into the general store and welcome once again, folks. Slim Bryant and the Wildcats became a fixture on the new station for the next 10 years. Old Dan and I The kick we got out of it was knowing that we had the people who liked it, you know. Sure been nice. Thank you very much, and see you next week. Bye now. They were live. We had no tape. We had it timed down to 29.20, and that was it. This is Bill Sutherland. Live TV also had moments like, well, notice the technician in the lower right? No retakes. The Buzz and Bill show, Buzz Aston and Bill Hines, made the move from radio to television, Dumont style. They performed in the same studio where Kay Newman offered cooking tips in Kay's kitchen, and a local jeweler hosted the Wilkins Amateur Hour and the Easy Credit Ranch Girls. Hi friends, I'm Abby Neal, and the Ranch Girls are all here with me again today to sing and play. The comfortable charm of the Ranch Girls created a legion of fans. The television I was on from 50 to 59. Bill Brandt moved from KDKA Radio to the untested medium called television, where he teamed up with co-host Midge Dixon. It was very primitive. We had no money to work with, but I would uh, just start thinking about things that are happening, and uh, I just wing it. We just did our thing, and uh, the engineers did theirs. Engineers like Bill Usberger, who started in 1951 and stayed for 35 years, they just made it up as they went along. Out of the crudest uh, pieces of equipment, we get an end result. But many of the things were built, hand-built, through our own initiative, and that's how the station survived really. Pittsburgh steel mills were working around the clock and WDTV responded. In March 1952 it became the first station in the nation to broadcast 24 hours a day. Everybody tried to do the best they could to get a perfect product. Florence Sando blazed a path for female reporters with the woman's angle and Jean Connolly hosted Home Edition. Oh we talked about fashions, we had food demonstrations, child psychology, Name it, we had it. The Gene Connolly Show followed the noon news with Bill Burns, about as close to real news as a woman could hope to get in the early 50s. They could host programs, they could produce programs, but you didn't talk about sports and you didn't talk about news, hard news that is. It was uh, a segregated period actually.
1954, Dr. Jonas Salk tests his polio vaccine in local schools, and a milestone is reached at Pittsburgh's first television station. WDTV was sold to Westinghouse, and the station moved from cramped quarters here at the Chamber of Commerce building to the stainless steel office complex called Gateway Center, where it adopted the call letters of America's first radio station, KDKA. The switch from Channel 3 to Channel 2 was marked by pageantry and balloons and a renewed commitment to the community. The first Children's Hospital benefit show brought KDKA personalities in contact with the real stars, the children. Rock and roll moved to the beat of KDKA's Clark Race as his weekly dance party topped the charts. And the John Reed King Show lured Jane Mansfield to the set. He works hard. He even gets up at this ridiculous hour in the morning. 7.28 and 15 seconds is the time. This is Daybreak. And Daybreak was Don Riggs with co-host Marcy Lynn Pugh. It was live TV to begin with. And you don't have that anymore, except news. So we made mistakes, and there wasn't anything you could do about it. But we also had fun. And what could be more fun than introducing Saturday morning Tarzan movies as Buona Don? The set was $9. It was an era of small budgets and big ideas, and KDKA led the way. It was a leader, and it still is. KDKA, you can expect to have something good come out of there, and if it's bad, it's off real quick. The Children's Corner with Josie Carey, produced by WQED. Why, hi, don't I know you? Why Josie hi, Carey talked with little friends controlled by a talented young puppeteer named Fred Rogers. Her success on WQED was repeated on KDKA with the versatile Sterling Yates. We started Josie's Storyland in April of 1956, and it truly was a delightful program. Uh, Sterling played an inventor named Mr. Wrinkle, and he wore an idea hat. We had uh, Ludwig von Leyen, that was Johnny Costa, and he would answer us on the piano. And Katie Kay at that time decided that they wanted us to do a program for older children. So we invented Funsville. The Pittsburgh Playhouse gave Josie Carey her start, along with some famous friends. Shirley Jones is in the middle, and this is Mitzi Steiner. And she had very first children's program. It was called Mitzi's Kitty Castle. And Hank Stoll was her puppeteer with Kanish. How come your mouth doesn't move? Kanish was named uh, by Mitzi Steiner. She said, oh, he looks like a Kanish. And I said, what's a Kanish? Hello? The mop-haired puppet hasn't aged a bit. We had control. I wrote with the, many of the directors who put the show together. I can recall our budget for the entire week was 20 bucks. Everyone pitched in, including Hank Stoll's daughter, Julianne. I don't get a kiss from anybody. Oh. They went on the air without a safety net, performing live before the only commercial audience in town. They wrote their own rules, those pioneers of the picture tube. They made a lot of mistakes and a lot of friends. They're all Pittsburghers, and they had an association with the, the locality, which is uh, something that is rare. Let me tell you a story about Mr. John Costa. If there was one performer, the glue that held those shows together, it was the piano man. You could turn John on 5 a.m. on Christmas morning. Say, Johnny, I want the best rendition of Gershwin you could do, and I want 15 minutes of it. Go and do it. To kids, Johnny Costa was the outrageous Indian Mary. To those he worked with, he was the master of keys. I can tell you that he was one of the greatest in, in the country, and possibly the world. This guy's, his hands thought music. In one of his last interviews, Johnny Costa talked about his days with Pittsburgh's first television station. I was the musical director for 16 years. It was a good long ride. I remember finally, toward the end, they gave me my own 15-minute program and it was called The Wonderful World of Johnny Costa. As a regular on public television with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and on KDKA's Children's Hospital show, Johnny Costa turned down offers elsewhere to play in his hometown. When I see people enjoying my music, as I did you when you were smiled and when I did something like that, that's enough payment for me. For Johnny Costa and the television pioneers he worked with, it was indeed 
a wonderful world. Bye. The heartbeat of a community is reflected in the news of the day. And no one surpassed Bill Burns in his drive to get the story and get it right. We'll take a look at the early news when we come back. July the 19th, 1953, Pittsburgh's renaissance is well underway. The Squirrel Hill Tunnel has just opened, and a tough young reporter from KQV Radio delivers his first newscast on WDTV. Bill Burns took the place of departing news director Dave Murray and began a legacy that would span more than 35 years. He described that newsroom of long ago in a 1983 interview. There were only two of us in the newsroom, news editor George Thomas and myself. I was the news director, and reporter, and anchorman, and occasionally the film editor, too. They were pioneers in those days, in the early 50s. Uh, this was a new territory for them, and they really were experimenting. For young Patty Burns and her brother Mike, Pittsburgh's most famous newsman was simply Dad. People trusted him because they knew he was fair, and that he would be honest, and he would tell it the way it was. And that's what he did, like it or not. The Aluminum Company of America has reached a wage settlement with the United Steelworkers. A newscaster, a desk, and a microphone. It was little more than radio on television, but now and then, dramatic film made its way into The World Tonight, September 1953. A young man had climbed the Smithfield Street Bridge, intending to jump off. And up there with him, 100 feet above the Monongahela, was cameraman Charlie Boyle, who was shooting for Pit Parade. The picture story of the Pittsburgh scene, we were just playing around with. Two cameramen out on the, on the lamb trying to get enough material for that five minutes that was imperative each night. The pit parade went on the air the second day broadcast, January the 12th, 1949. Led by filmmaker Bill Beale, it continued for nearly a decade. People watched because they felt that it was local. It wasn't coming from Chicago or New York. The pit parade soon doubled from five minutes to ten. Lacking the instant turnaround of videotape and narrated live, it was a very demanding 10 minutes. Deadline was 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, we shot out to Turtle Creek, where the processor was. He'd run them through the processor, run them back to Pittsburgh. I'd look at edit it, write it, and then get in the car and go to the north side, and we'd put it on the air, and I'd narrate it. News was a labor of love for many in the industry as the new staff expanded under the new Westinghouse ownership. Larry Schmidt, Eyewitness News. This is Dave Kothick, Eyewitness News. I don't know what it's supposed to do, but it works. This is Paul Moyer. For the sports scene tonight, first National League games that are still in progress. The one-man sports department was Ray Scott, who went on to become a network sportscaster. But in those days, he doubled as a pitchman for Fort Pitt Beer. 1960 was a magical year for the Pirates, and legendary broadcaster Bob Prince had them all the way. There's the bat, it's in deep in the left field. She's going way, way back. Back goes Yogi Berra, and you can kiss it goodbye. It's gone. Bob Prince's play-by-play -play on KDKA radio and television added sparkle to a season that punctuated a long career as an unabashed supporter of his beloved Buckos. I would not have had the interest to even get ever get behind or in front of a microphone if not for Bob Prince and that came from just his uniqueness uh, the way he made the games exciting stuck him out swinging had his pitches a perfect nine inning no hit no run game if I had an idol in broadcasting he was it and nobody else comes close Pittsburgh's Mayor Joseph Barr spoke to a luncheon group at the best fan club in the Roosevelt Hotel yesterday 
The new station provided a stage for a young Texan, then working at KDKA Radio by the name of Paul Long. That name and that voice would resonate in Pittsburgh television for decades to come. We all started from scratch. And we learned as we went along. We made mistakes. We practiced. We tried not to do it again. He worked with Bill Burns, a matchup grounded in competition and also mutual admiration. He knew every policeman in town, so of me. He worked that beat better than a beat policeman. Another who pounded the news beat like a well-tuned drum was Al McDowell. You think we're a bit heavy in space spending? For this, uh, this time, yes. The young reporter made a name for himself at KDKA, jump-starting a distinguished career as a Pittsburgh newscaster. Al McDowell teamed up with Bill Burns for an airport interview with an out-of-work movie actor who planned to run for governor of California. Why are you here, Mr. Reagan? You're a long way from the uh, sunny shores of California. Well, actually, on my way to Washington. Of course, Bill Burns had the last word. I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> You're putting a mercenary tinge on a, on a social visit. I was at the White House with him when he interviewed Richard Nixon. He was the same interviewing Richard Nixon as he was interviewing a firefighter here in Pittsburgh who just risked his life. But I think he cared more about that fire. April 1956, a TWA twin-engine plane crashes on the outskirts of Greater Pitt. Survivors are taken to Sewickley Hospital, and Bill Burns is there. Did you have any warning at all that you were going to crash? No, no warning at all. I remember Dad telling me that I had the interviewer. He was interviewing a woman who was in that plane crash, and there was pounding at the door, pounding at the door. And finally, they opened the door, and it was the woman's husband who was trying to get in to see his wife, and Dad had the door locked. Women found a lot of locked doors in those early newsrooms, but there were some, like Eleanor Shano, whose persistence and talent made their voices heard and their faces seen. It was demeaning. It truly was. I knew that we could do more. I knew that we could write and produce and think, and we were educated. But we, we were allowed to maybe do the weather. She became a so-called weather girl. She also did commercials. But her role was in peril when she became pregnant in 1958. My sponsor was Sir to Perfect Sleeper, and they had a brilliant idea. We are going to hide Eleanor's pregnancy. She will wear a negligee and sit on the mattress and do the weather. Eleanor Chano's credibility improved when she got her own show dealing with serious issues. What did they call it? They called it the beauty spot. That was the mindset back then. The criteria really uh, has to do with the looks more than ability. Another who wasn't afraid to make her opinions felt was Marie Torrey. She had a show on KDKA during the 60s, and she covered the same stories as Bill Burns and other male counterparts. Sounds you just a little bit nervous, perhaps not as sure of yourself as you might sound in public? Well, there are possibilities that my predictions may not work out. Even the sports world was not off limits to Marie Torrey. She had already sparred with more dangerous foes. As a columnist for the New York Herald Tribune, she refused to reveal her sources for a story, even though it meant going to jail. If, by my serving this 10-day term, uh, it contributes to, to any kind of legislation protecting newspaper sources, then it will all have been worthwhile. As a reporter for KDKA, Marie Torrey met with the leaders of her era and erased, once and for all, the notion that television news was a club for men only. In the early 60s, KDKA was a leader in opening the way for African-American reporters. One passerby commented, why don't you save all this publicity until the effectiveness of the program has been tested? This is Ann Jordan reporting. The black voter, well, there's always the guidance of that overheard comment. Both mayoral candidates running in a dead heat for last. Vic Miles reporting. <laughs> In 1968, Yvonne Forston became the first black reporter to have her own show. Slowly but surely, the barriers continued to fall, lending diversity and richness to a station on the brink of bold new achievements and on the dawn of a new decade. The 70s and 80s brought great changes to Western Pennsylvania. And it was an era when local programming flourished here on KDKA. We'll look back at some of our favorite moments after this.
July 16, 1970. Bill Burns reports live from Three Rivers Stadium as the Pittsburgh Pirates celebrate a new decade with a new ballpark. Led by the incomparable Roberto Clemente, the Pirates would win the World Series the following year. KDKA would witness many magic moments in 40 years as the flagship of the Pirates. The 70s saw the beginning of a new show that would enjoy a run of 13 glorious years. Dave Durian and Donna Hanover dropped into town as co-hosts of a brand new concept, a magazine on television. Cheers. We would call people and say, hey, Dave Durian from KDK TV and Evening Magazine. And they say, well, which is it, a magazine or are you with TV? Well, no, it's a magazine on TV. Well, it was a totally foreign concept back then. Evening was a pioneering kind of effort because the minicam had just been invented. So we were able to go on location and do remarkable things in remarkable places. This is like this awesome flamingo farm in the Bahamas. This gentleman we met would chase a bunch of flamingos in a flock around in a circle. And if you use your imagination, they look to be marching. But there was an effort to hire people that had a wonderful kind of spontaneity that were top-notch professionals that knew how to have fun. I'm Liz Miles. I'm John Burnett, and this is an exciting evening for us. From the island of Aloha to the Emerald Isle, Liz Miles and John Burnett were always full speed ahead. For that matter, so was photographer Dave Forsting. We were ready to, to work hard, and travel, and uh, put in the 80-hour weeks to be creative and to uh, fulfill our dreams. And, and I think that's just what that show was about for a lot of us. It was just a dream come true. I got to fulfill all these little Walter Mitty fantasies of mine. I, I had a blast. Evening Magazine introduced us to Kenny the Cab Driver, the Phantom Diner, and Yvonne Zanos as the Secret Shopper. Hi, I'm comedian Dennis Miller. I'm performing tonight in the Strip District at Brandy's. Evening Magazine also introduced us to the zany world of a Pittsburgh comic named Dennis Miller. I'm so glad we had this time together. Dennis Miller also hosted a weekly show of his own called Punchline. Punchline! Beginning a career that would leave him laughing nationwide. For the last time, have a great evening, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> We're off to the winner. John Burnett and co-host Mary Rob Jackson went out the same way Dave Durian and Donna Hanover came in, leaving many happy memories behind. October 23rd, 1978, marked the beginning of an afternoon talk and entertainment show that will always have a very special place in my heart. Pittsburgh Today gave me the opportunity to work with some wonderful co-hosts, from Ed Malley, Wayne Van Dyne, to John Wade, who joined me for a cake-baking episode, in which I forgot a very important ingredient. What is this flour for? Is this flour supposed to go with the cake? Oh, the perils of live TV. When John Wade moved on, John Burnett jumped in to take his place. Those who watched me in the afternoon from 2 to 3 o'clock with Patrice knew that that's where I was having the most fun. Because that really was like live theater. There was always this underlying theme of let's have fun. Guess what? We've got a kidney for you. This transplant team is rushing a donated organ to a life-saving transplant operation. The Peabody award-winning documentary, Second Chance, was one of a long line of successes for producer Jan Getz. Well, Pittsburgh was becoming a big transplant center at the time due to Dr. Starzl's work here. And so our general manager at the time thought it would be a great time to try to encourage organ donation across the country. And we know for a fact that many people received organs who wouldn't have because people donated because of the show. Special programs blossomed in the 80s. It was just a wonderful time to be here at KDK, to think very broadly because there really were no boundaries. We did some international travel. We traveled nationally. Sort of whatever it took to put the best show on the air. It's cut out of the air! A miracle catch by Franco Harris and four Steelers Super Bowls capped off the 70s. They're from, they're from here, the great football team. The Steelers brought a measure of hope to a population ravaged by steel mill closings. 
when the Steelers and Pirates won it all in 1979, Pittsburgh was dubbed the City of Champions. I was an intern at KDK back then, and obviously I'd grown up uh, in this area my entire life, so I followed the teams very closely. That's, that was my passion, following sports. And to see in that year how a sports team, two of them, can just take over a city it was unbelievable. I think it led to a citywide unification. It was a tremendous uplifting opportunity for everyone in this area. I used to make my living down in Midland, PA. Songwriter Mike Pickering captured the mood of Western Pennsylvania as mills continued to close. Evening Magazine's Liz Miles arranged to have his song recorded, and Steel Mill Blues became a rallying point for economic justice. Katie's Army, we've been on the roads in the tri-state area in a fight to help feed the unemployed. Katie's Army was designed to provide food for needy families. Then, when there was a disaster hit, and then another disaster, we decided to use it for that purpose as well, disaster relief. Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of Vibrations. I am Lynn Hayes Freeland and tonight we will talk with Rosa Parks. An interview with Rosa Parks was a highlight of a weekly program called Vibrations, creating a forum for the African American community. In later years, it took on the name of its producer and host. We began what I believe is a very special edition of the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show, our exclusive interview with Nelson Mandela. I think certainly at the time it was created, and to some extent, even now, there are a lot of issues that happen, that take place in the African-American community that cannot be fully explored in a minute and a half on the evening news. Hi, I'm Eric. And I'm Debbie. Children's programming was on the right track with the trolley show, punching a ticket to a different adventure each week. We just wanted to do something that we could encourage kids to be read to by their parents. And so um, that was the birth of Let's Read a Story. And we had a wonderful local cast. Thanks to teachers, also became a regular feature here on KDKA. But nothing confirms our commitment to children more than the Children's Hospital Benefit Show. This highlight of the holiday season has raised millions of dollars for Children's Hospital. Fittingly, longtime host Bill Burns chose this forum to say goodbye with daughter Patty at his side. So what more can I say? To thank all of you again, and good night, good luck, and good news tomorrow. Bill Burns left his imprint on KDK News for more than 35 years, and the rest of us have done our best to take up the mantle. Coming up, a look at today's news and the big stories that have shaped our city and state. Patrice. Tornadoes ripped through western Pennsylvania. Help him, God. U.S. Air 427 goes down in flames. Floodwaters bathe the Golden Triangle in a sea of sludge. When big stories hit, Pittsburghers turn to KDK News, and they don't get any bigger than March 28, 1979, when radiation started leaking from a nuclear plant at a place called Three Mile Island. What a chaotic situation that was. And we didn't know until later, much later, that we came, I guess, about this close, the meltdown. And we were just on the air constantly. May 30th, 1985, a wide band of tornadoes wrecks havoc north of Pittsburgh. This was the ticket booth at the Spotlight 88 drive-in. What's left of the ticket booth was found in those trees back there. As a meteorologist, you're never going to see this. Maybe once in a lifetime, you'll see this. That's it. It was just unbelievable how the tornadoes just zip, and then they redevelop, zip, and make it closer and closer to Pittsburgh. Never got to Pittsburgh. It was one of the, the worst nights around here I can ever remember, and I've been here 31 years. And we got to the scene very close to airtime, like 20 minutes before 11 o'clock that night. So I told Ralph, I said, Ralph, you know, the best place to be is to be on top of my truck, and we'll do a live show from there. And he's looking up at me and said, you're crazy. So no, Ralph, trust me. Ralph Iannotti is up in Big Beaver Borough in Beaver County right now, where that tornado has the death toll mounting. Ralph, what's the story? Well, Ray, we have a disaster on our hands tonight in Big Beaver Borough. I'm standing in front of what was a shopping center. When the weather gets mean, John Shumway gets going into the teeth of Hurricane Hugo. 
There's already a lot of trees down around town, a lot of power lines around town. There's virtually no power whatsoever in the city of Charleston. And it looked like, you know, it was smoke and then stuff, and it just come down and just exploded. September 8th, 1994, U.S. Air Flight 427 goes down in flames. The newsroom is mobilized. We got to the area of the crash, uh, a hillside in Hopewell Township, and we could see that plume of smoke rising from uh, that hillside. The flight recorder, the so-called black box, has been recovered, and it is now under guard. Now, we did talk to a few crew members who were arriving from other flights, and they were obviously shaken. It's an incomprehensible tragedy that's going to affect the lives of hundreds and thousands of people. I didn't know it at the time when I went out there, but there were a couple of people that I knew who were on that plane. So that makes it uh, most difficult to separate the reporter from the person who says, oh my gosh, what a tragedy this is. Eyewitness News at 6. Ray Tannehill joined KDK in 1976 and teamed up with Patty Burns. It was a powerful partnership. She knew what I was going to do. I knew what she was going to do. And it all worked so very well. And besides, we liked each other. Patty Burns co-anchored the news at noon with Bill Burns, the only father-daughter anchor team in the country. Patty, those are the sports. Well, Dad, in Irving, Texas, so when I first started anchoring the new news with my father, I called him Bill. I thought that would be more professional. Well, we got calls. Viewers were irate that I would call my father by his first name. So I went back to what was natural, and I called him Dad. And viewers called the newscast Patty and Daddy. For Bill Burns, it was his final chapter at KDKA. His passing in September 1997 left a void that will never be filled. I saw a lot of him, talked to him often. We would go out to dinner, and it was really uh, very difficult for me to get over that. I'm not over it yet. I don't know if you ever are. Now Al Julius is here with some thoughts on last night's winner. Al? Thanks, Patty. It makes no difference how you voted yesterday. Jesse Jackson won. For hard-hitting commentary spiced with a dose of theatrics, no one could match Al Julius. Everybody's got to be pigeonholed. You're an anchor, you're supposed to look like this. You're a reporter, you're supposed to do it like this. No, you're a person. You should react to each stories in a different way. Everybody should react. You react to something in a different way. That's why nobody could pigeonhole me. That's why nobody could put me in a particular category. I was Al Julius, that's it. I am Julius, hey, what do you mean I was? <laughs> Al Julius started a turkey fund that provided thousands of Thanksgiving dinners to needy families, a tradition that continues with Wayne Van Dyne. Back there is the Kuwaiti border, and the military equipment you see is Iraqi military equipment. The military guides who took us out there said, you see that guard post way over on the other side? Yeah, and they said, well, that's the country of Iraq, and if you were to cross over there, you would be shot and killed. And I realized I'm not in Pittsburgh anymore. <laughs> but Harold Hayes met Pittsburghers in uniform in reports from Saudi Arabia in the tense days leading up to the Gulf War. Kenny Sims, the photographer, would hold up a pirate cap and say, anybody from Pittsburgh? And don't you know, people would raise their hands from Washington, PA, and Manesson and all that and uh, would come over and talk to us. January 20th, 1996. KDK is first with the news as the Allegheny River overflows its banks flooding the Golden Triangle. We went up about two feet or so between midnight and two o'clock this morning, Joe. Right. Weekday reporters are called in as the Saturday morning newscast is extended. This is ground zero, Allegheny County right now under a tornado warning. June 2nd, 1998, tornadoes strike Mount Washington and the KDK news team stays on the air commercial free for nearly six hours. 1994, Mary Rob Jackson and her husband, chief photographer Michael Chalik, spend an emotional week in Vietnam. They come across a woman who shows photographs from the late 60s. And she was 16 years old when a Marine named Tim Duffy from Ohio found Hue crying on the doorstep of her parents' shop. Some South Vietnamese soldiers had tried to assault her. When she returned, Mary Rob called that ex-Marine who drove from Ohio to see the tape. It was an emotional payoff to an unforgettable week. I went there with a lot of apprehensions. I, I really had no idea what we were going to run into. But to be able to experience and to see these places and to imagine what it must have been like to be there, 
was unbelievable, and, and Michael and I shared that together. It's a river town, and the people put you in mind of Pittsburgh. Ray Tannehill visited Russia. Patty Burns joined Pittsburghers on a pilgrimage to the Vatican. And when Bishop John Wright had an appointment in Rome to become a cardinal, KDKA was there. Welcome to the Sunday Business Page. Bill Flanagan hosts a weekly business show when he's not giving tips as money editor on KDKA News. We try to look at it a little bit as an outsider and, and try to really explain to people what all these things that are happening around us, nationally, internationally, economically, regionally, really mean to them. KDKA investigates. Tonight at 6. Our long tradition of investigative reporting is emphasized in hard-hitting stories by Andy Sheehan, Marty Griffin, and Paul Martino. Last year, Fumo's Appropriations Committee and his guests ate up more than $21,000 at just one steakhouse in Harrisburg, all in the name of legislative business. We did a months-long investigation of lawmakers' expenses and perks. And what we found is that taxpayers were leasing them expensive luxury cars, uh, that many lawmakers were double dipping on expense money. We also had to buy them airline tickets because they didn't want to have to drive back and forth to Harrisburg just having a nice car. Why don't they take the boulders away? Because if they do, perhaps more of the wall will come down. And what about the homes up above? Problem? Please Take it to Wayne. Wayne Van Dyne has solved a lot of them in 40 yeah, of years of broadcasting. I concentrate on solving problems, getting results, and I don't set out to make people look bad. I just try to get the problem solved. Oh, you just don't know. <laughs> there is a sense of satisfaction, particularly when a story has a happy ending. His name is William Pope. He's 80 years old now. Happy ending, our Brenda Waters specialty, balancing the bad news of the day with a positive note. All right, Dave, you ready to skydive? Fortunately, this story also had a happy ending. He left memories behind that replay in our minds. Yes, son, I did see Lemieux. Speaking in rhyme, much of the time, Dave Crawley's hometown Faces and Places feature have kept us hopping, winning six regional Emmy Awards and a whole lot of friends. The 1991 Stanley Cup champions, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And sports reporter Paul Steigerwald was there. Now Ulf Samuelson's holding the cup up now back here. The following year, history repeats itself. No way we're doing it. And repeats itself. Speaking of unexpected moments, Steeler Walter Abercrombie has an unscheduled meeting with sideline photographer Michael Challick. Here's how it looks from the other side. Ouch. Lots of families say they do plan to bring their back. Now and then we've all wound up with egg on our face, but if the cat's got your tongue, no one can take the edge off that high pressure system, like Larry Richard. We've shared laughter and heartfelt moments in 50 years of news coverage. We're proud to call Pittsburgh home, a tradition that's been part of KDK News since Bill Burns first gained our trust with the world tonight. There is something special about the call letters KDKA. And people automatically tune to us when there is a big story. And we were a news cast, not a news show. You got the difference? I'm working at the station that I grew up watching. I ate my dinner with for about the first, I don't know, 15, 16 years of my life. There was always a sense of pride in saying that you worked at KDKA. And it's interesting, 23 years later, um, you still feel that same sense of pride. 50 years. Someone has to pay the bills. Coming up, a word from our sponsors and some wacky commercials of long ago. It's not... What? WDTV Pittsburgh. You sleep on it, not in it. Sleep on it, not in it. And now, a word from our sponsors. We've produced thousands of commercials and promotional spots over the past 50 years. These days, a 30-second spot can take hours of work. But there was a time when 30 seconds took 30 seconds. The ads were live, and so were the mistakes. What man hasn't hankered to leave his cares behind and head for the open road? That's Bob Trow and Bike. The straight man is Bill Brandt and the teleprompter is mounted on the camera. 
and so I'm watching that teleprompter, and I'm doing the commercial, and all of a sudden, it disappears. The camera was following Bob Throw. Meantime, Mark Jacobson was the advertising agency. He was in the control room, he was going crazy. It wasn't a set way of doing things. So we experimented as we went along. Uh, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. But if you made a mistake, it went on the air that way. Come time to clean it. Oh, you know what a problem that used to be. Give it a little trip. Wayne Van Dyne with a simple demonstration. Okay, you just reach in like this. There are a lot of local things that we did. Uh, I don't say it was well, but we did them. Closets were a death trap. Now I roll back with fallback. What'd he say? Roll back with fallback. See fallback at Better Built Supply, Boulevard of the Allies, near Shenley Park. We call this jacket the tamale. <laughs> There's a hot one. I told you I was no handyman, but I wanted to do this live because in doing so, I'm going to show you that we have something here that I think is great. This reminds me of some of those TV classic bloop commercials. <laughs> Westinghouse, no other team can score like Westinghouse. Mommy's defrosting again. <laughs> this is too much. Oh, man. Lucky Mr. Walsh. Oh, oh, did I say lucky? And how? Mr. Walsh is wearing a King's Daycron suit. Louie went to Tui. Tui Motor Company, Tri-State's largest Ford dealer at East 8th Avenue in Homestead. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> oh, another sponsor of Bites of the Dust. <laughs> Local companies that make food and sell food and serve food had some mouth-watering treats. The best blues are the ones that make you feel good. 1989 Bluesberries for a limited time, only at Giant Eagle. Real good. We hope the special lift you get this season lasts all year long. Happy Holidays from Eden Park. No need to run around in circles deciding what to serve. Oh my gosh, it's frothing slosh. We served up a strange brew of beer commercials. Hey, I'm sorry, it's all right. H.A.T., remember this? Well, we slotted Cincinnati, and we crushed them out in L.A. Ads were slicker in the Super Bowl 70s, and so was the KDKA marketing team. With the advent of uh, film and tape, the commercials have gotten much more sophisticated. The style has changed tremendously. The content has changed. And uh, uh, these days, it's much more difficult to, to hook an audience. John Cigna oh. is learning firsthand about the KDKA radio picnic patrol. Ready, John? Oh, I'm always ready for a picnic. John Cigna is a frequent target of Drew Mignot's promotional wit. We've had him dressed up as everything from a, a, a gypsy fortune teller to a fairy godmother. And uh, in one particular instance, we had him dressed up as a tomato. We also make viewers aware of our programs and our news reporters. These promotional spots were produced on film by Pittsburgh cinematographer Glenn Przeborski. We are the picture of you in all we do. They were always a lot of fun because you got to work with, uh, you know, the regulars at KDKA, all the people that were the on-air people at the time, as well as some of the behind-the-scenes guys. And it was a fun thing. It was also work that was very, very visible in Pittsburgh. We, to we had all kind of huge movie lights out in there to, to light up this entire PPG square. And literally, by promoting it on TV, Katie filled as many people as you could legally fit in PPG square. Former promotion director Arthur Greenwald came up with the world's biggest chorus line. He literally talked the stadium into letting us film and get all the people from the stands who would agree to stay after the pirate game was over to come out into the field and sort of do this chorus line type dance behind some professional dancers. And yeah. I'm Sergeant Holmes from Steubenville, and you're watching KDK TV 2. Remember the glitter promos? Okay, you're watching Glitter Too. I just wanted to do it because it looked fun, and I wanted to play with the glitter. You're watching Glitter Too. Elizabeth Mock at four years of age. Mostly, I remember being really like frustrated and getting really angry because I couldn't get it right. I was like, "Come on, we can do this." Hi, I'm Elizabeth Mock, and you're watching KDK TV 2. It hasn't all been glitter in our first 50 years. In fact, it's been a lot of hard work. 
For the pioneering spirit continues as KDKA heads into its second half century. And the old transmitter site here on the hillside in Perrysville is undergoing a facelift. A surge of power will boost us into the next millennium, energizing a whole new era of broadcasting. And that old Channel 3, which turned into Channel 2, will soon coexist with digital Channel 25. And as we've said many times over the past 50 years, you heard it here first. Live with the... With the... Uh, on the sky, here we are. Uh, high over the area where the uh, burns are. We'll be back with a complete report at 6 o'clock, Bill. Chopper 2, Ron Boy, Chopper 2. I want you to be beautiful and perfect, Costa. All right. Beautiful, perfect, Costa? Watch. Well, come on, baby. With a here in it, there, here, there, everywhere. Here you are, live in the suburbs. Falling John Burnett, garbage man. Here he is, show him now. That's John. What a guy, what a guy. Pick up that garbage, John. Hey, 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 look at this. What is that, a crock pot? Three rooms, 398. Three rooms, 398. Three rooms, 398. This may be a livable, lovable city, but when it comes to jaywalkers, it's a town without pity. This is the front coming. That's kind of like riding in the back seat if you're sitting behind my wife. Randall, I want to thank you very much for letting me use one of your airplanes for my uh, flying lesson. And I'm very sorry this had to happen. And I'll try not to let it happen again. Well, that, that's, uh, that's perfectly all right. Who will be built? You were the station. Uh, build the station for it, Colonel. Uh, we'll talk about that. Fine. Thank you very much, yes. Big Adventure Fan. I've been divorced over 25 years from the first mistake, and I'm still sticking to what I told her then. Tonight, a most unusual guest, and he is here live and in living color. None other than Tiny Dim. You say, for beat beer. For beat beer. Not yet, eh? No, no, take it easy. Eh? Sorry, it's all right. Repeat. For, for, for. Beat beer. 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 Are you satisfied? Yeah. You feel better now? Yeah. I am very close, eh? Sorry, it's all right. You repeat, please. For, for. Beat beer. Beer. It's good? It's good. Good. Thank you all again for letting us in. This is Bill Burns wishing you good night, good luck, and good news tomorrow. <laughs>